Branding for Abundance podcast. This is your host, Dr. TK, licensed clinical psychologist and number one therapist business coach. So in today's episode, I actually want to talk about what do you do in your business when social media shuts down? And so in light of the recent events that have occurred in the last few weeks, I thought it would be good to take you behind the scenes of how I was able in my business to quickly shift and pivot during a launch when my launch was happening on social media, specifically a Facebook group. And so on the morning of October 4th, 2021, um, my typical morning routine, especially during a launch in which I am a bit more strict in terms of how I do not look at social media, how I reframe from actually checking my emails in the morning. And the goal as soon as I wake up is to get dressed, go to my home gym, um, come back to my home, do my prayer, meditation, and scripting in my journal, if not listening to my script, because I typically audio record them. And so I did half of that morning. I woke up, I walked over to the gym, had a excellent workout, And then I posted a boomerang picture. And so, you know, I thought that everything was good. And then when I was walking home, I noticed that when I was about to post a reel, it kept buffering. And so I didn't honestly think anything of it because when I go from my home gym, walking over back to my home, we live in a very bad service area. And so if I'm not connected to Wi-Fi, something may actually not get posted. So I thought that that was a sign that says you're not supposed to be checking your Instagram anyway. Get off. You posted your workout picture to motivate people in the morning. Go on with your morning routine. So when I got in the house, I did my morning routine, but something in my gut was saying, go post the real right now. And I didn't understand why. And this was about seven something in the morning. And so I stopped what I was doing, but like drinking my morning tea and I tried to post the reel, but I noticed that it kept saying your internet, you know, connection was not stable. And so I thought that that was really weird that my internet connection wasn't stable. And so I turned on my TV, YouTube came on my TV. So I said, streaming clearly is working, right? So then I tried to turn on Netflix. Netflix was working. Then I tested my router and my router said disconnected. So I, tr- I troubleshooted for a few moments and then my router was working, but Instagram was not. And then that's when it hit. Oh my gosh. Is this like it was a year and a half ago when Instagram looked like it was uploading your stuff and then it would say connection lost. And at that time, Instagram had went down for a full day, if not a day and a half. And it specifically happened twice. And I remember when it happened, I thought, oh my gosh, what my business coaches told me what could happen actually is happening, meaning do not put all of your eggs into one basket, okay? So after troubleshooting, I texted my husband because he was actually taking our son to school. And I said, hey, check and see if you can find any news or anything about Instagram going down because if not, something is wrong with our home internet and this is a bigger problem, I'm in the middle of a launch. And so over the last two and a half weeks, I have been having therapists opt into this Facebook group so that we can do some free live trainings on how to manifest a profitable private practice. And on Monday, October 4th was open cart, meaning we have open enrollment for the public to be able to enroll into the Dope Therapist Academy. This is a very big deal because this is the last launch of the year. This is also the last launch where DTA will be offered at the price that it is now. It also is significant because we are retiring a lot of the bonuses that our students have received received in the last year and a half. So we need to make sure that A, I can also host my bonus workshops on Facebook. That's supposed to happen in about two hours from me realizing that Instagram went went down around 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So when my husband was on his way home, he sent me a snapshot from his phone from a CNN alert that says, thousands, um, tens of thousands of Facebook and social media, you know, Instagram and WhatsApp, um, you know, community members, basically we can't get access to the portal. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what, what do I do? 
I have to do a bonus session in like an hour and a half. And so now I want to take you behind the scenes of how I was able to overcome pivoting in my business and not stopping me from executing the task. And I really hope that what you will hear and what I am about to share is how you can learn how to pivot when things don't go according to your plan. And so as I mentioned earlier, something like this happened two years ago. And at that time, I really, as a business owner, understood the importance of building a list, also known as email marketing, because you never want to put all of your eggs in one basket and heavily rely on communicating with your community on a platform that you don't own in the first place. Now, am I saying that you own the people who opt into your email list? Of course not, but you purchase email addresses by people opting in because you give them value back. Hopefully there's a reciprocation and an exchange. Like I give out checklists, I do free virtual parties. I do a whole lot of things that are adding value to business owners as mental health therapists. And so, Um, I can also download all of those names and email addresses or any other data that I collect that they give to me in exchange for something that they want, which means that now I have ownership of those email addresses, if that makes sense. But on social media, if things freeze or you have to go live on social media and you don't have a plan B or a backup or just know how to take fast action, there is going to be a problem because you cannot pivot. Okay. So after understanding the importance of email marketing at that time, I was already part of a coaching program, but what I did is I raised my antennas and I realized I need to go back and review some of the lessons that I had been taught from my coaches and take email marketing a lot more seriously. So if you are a therapist and you've never learned about email marketing, you definitely want to stay you know, in connection with me because in DTA, we have a graduation process where students are now ready, because some of them are not, but when they are ready to learn about building a scalable foundation beyond their private practice, they can graduate into a membership program that we have in which it's monthly calls. They can cancel at any time, but we're taking them step by step of how to get your business things in place, your systems in place, so that when you do start taking action, having webinars, having program, online course launches, coaching programs, book launches, you have the systems to catch all of these scalable streams of income. So luckily, during this process of October 2021, I had already built clearly the email list for people to even get access to this Facebook group to then participate in these live bootcamp calls. Because the way that our funnel works is that when people ask for access to this Facebook group, me and my team compare that uh, request to the actual email list. And if they're not on the email list, we will just nicely inbox them on Facebook and state, hey, we noticed that you requested access to our Manifest a Profitable Private Practice Bootcamp. However, we don't see your name on the list. Is there another name or email address that you went by? If so, can you please provide us with that so that we can allow you to get into the group, okay? So consistency is the name of the game. And after you get opt-ins on your email list, it's vitally important that if you do have an email list already, that you nurture your audience. You just don't want to get people's email addresses and then say, okay, I got what I needed. They came to one workshop. I'm done. You know, they purchased my program. I'm done. Not everyone is going to buy something from you right away and or if not at all. But it doesn't mean, at least my philosophy, that you cannot nurture your audience because some people need to be warmed up to even acknowledging that they need your help, okay? So with consistency, um, the way that I teach my students how to build out a proper email list is to email and nurture their audience within the first seven days of getting on the email list. And of course we teach them what to go into the email, how do you spread out your emails and all those great things. And so how does this relate to the launch? I realized that I had an hour and a half to pivot. So what should I do? Well, 
I already start thinking before my husband even told me the whole CNN uh, pop up on his phone that I may need to get dressed early, walk over to the clubhouse in my home, see if I can use their internet, go into a conference room that we have. Hopefully no one is there. And if someone is there, I need to go over to the mini clubhouse by where I live at on my side because we live in a huge complex where there's two sides. But maybe I need to then go to the backup location, use the Wi-Fi and do the boot camp there. I had already sketched out multiple backup plans if Facebook wasn't working. After 30 minutes of troubleshooting, I clearly saw it wasn't working and I'm not going to wait until the time of my workshop to email people. So I did two things. I sent out a text message to those who opted into getting text reminders and daily affirmations for the bootcamp. So I sent out that reminder. I also came downstairs to my home office and I used the home studio that I luckily purchased two launches ago back in June to host these live workshops and make it more aesthetically pleasing because I can do more things on the screen, do sound effects and all those good things. And it's a good customer experience, you know, effect in the boot camps. And so luckily I had knew how to set these things up for Facebook, but I never had done it for YouTube, but luck, but I'm a very, I'm gonna say tech savvy gal. Okay. So I just played around with it. I clicked on some buttons. I said, how do I set this up for YouTube? But again, I had had experience doing other types of workshops on YouTube. So I thought to myself, it couldn't be that easy, but I need to just sit down and focus for 15 minutes. Do you know that I set up the YouTube streaming platform within 15 minutes? Okay. I tell you, when you have your mind set on something and you declare that the outcome will still be epic, people will still come. And so I set it up in 15 minutes. I told my husband to check YouTube to see if it shows premiering. I told him to watch it upstairs on the big screen to text me if there's anything that goes wrong. Also to let me know if you can hear me okay, if you can see my background okay. And believe it or not, we had about 20 something people, if not 30 show up live, which was pretty impressive considering the last minute shift from Facebook over to YouTube with my text message and also an email blast, okay? I did all of this with the help of my husband and mainly by myself. So what I'm also sharing with you is that even though I have a team, when things need to get done as a business owner, as a CEO, you're not excused from problem solving in your business. Sometimes when we start scaling, we believe that, oh, we don't need to learn that system. We don't need to go through the training. We don't need to set that up. We just need to hand it off. And one of the things that I teach my students in the academy on a introductory level, and then heavily in depth in my elite coaching mastermind program, is that delegation is key when you are onboarding and training people. It is vitally important that you use experiences like this one to document what happened. And I would rather write this down step by step of what to do in execution phase if I do need help, if I can set up the stream on my computer while someone on my team or even my husband gets on his computer and he knows now how to send the email. And I'm saying my husband because it may come to a point where during the day and time of that boot camp, if we only need two to three people, but somebody else is not available to do an extra step, we all need to know how to do it. So I just wanted to show you what happens during a very important event in a business, a launch, when you have to choose how to pivot in your business. I also want to reiterate why it's important for you as a business owner not to put all of your eggs in one basket. If you only rely on social media as a marketing tool to get in front of your clients and you don't even use other social media platforms like LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, you know, just different platforms. And you don't collect email addresses of a way to even communicate to your community just in case you can't even get on, let's just say Instagram because you're out of the country, but maybe you can schedule an email to stay in connection with them or drop some value. So do not put all of your eggs in one basket because when the time comes and it will happen again, you don't want to be faced with not having a plan B. So if you want to hear more 
tips and hacks of how to be a better business owner as a mental health provider and stay connected in our, in our community. Also to receive daily affirmations or motivational quotes as a business owner, at least Monday through Friday, then I would highly encourage you to text us at 310-388-8603. We made sure to put the text and the code word in the show notes, but the code word is abundance, abundance. Okay. Text 310-388-8603. And text the word abundance, you will automatically be placed on our list. It will probably ask you some basic information. And then you can even stay connected when we have future upcoming virtual parties. Okay. So I will see you in the next podcast episode. Um, Please make sure to let me know what was your biggest takeaway. I am very grateful for every single last podcast listener that has chosen to subscribe and follow my channel and also share this podcast episode or multiple podcast episodes with other therapists therapists, also pre-licensed therapists, because it's never too early to brand yourself as a mental health business owner. So I'm grateful for you tuning in today and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.